objective of this training film is to provide the users with all aspects of VIP 6AI operator interface. Please note that any programs contained within this film is for training purposes only and not to be used for patient tissue processing. The VIP 6AI is the seventh generation of the VIP vacuum infiltration processor. It is available only as a floor model. It can process up to 300 standard tissue cassettes using conventional tissue processing reagents. A compatible reagent list is available in the product brochure. The anticipated outcome is for the user to gain control over the VIP 6AI by gaining an increased understanding of the feature and operation variables. Sections covered by this training video will cover System Overview, Settings and Programming, which includes user convenience features such as automatic top-off solutions during low fluid conditions, automatic transfer of reagents during processing, and bulk reagent stations. User maintenance and care of the instrument will also be highlighted in this video. The VIP 6AI consists of three modules control, processing, and reagent. The control module provides user interface options. It receives and stores user data, and it is the brains of the unit. The front of the unit is the LCD color touch screen. On the right side of the control module, you will find the power switch, a USB port to download data as needed, a speaker and information on safety rating along with the serial number of your processor. The serial number can be viewed by accessing the utility menu and selecting software version and serial number. In the rear, in the back of the unit, you will find the power cord, which is not hardwired and can be removed, the connection port for a UPS backup battery, connections for attaching an external alarm, and an ethernet port, and the external exhaust port for the air system. For the external alarm, Sakura Fintech does not manufacture or sell external alarms, but one can easily be purchased from an electronic store. Programmable errors chosen by the user will trigger an alarm and the person or department chosen will be notified that interaction with the processor is needed. Detailed instructions on connection can be provided by contacting Sakura's technical support department at 1-800-725-8723, option number two. The Ethernet port is used for ICE support, which allows information to be transferred from the processor to our tech support department where errors can be monitored. This option is only on instruments that are under the first year of in-warranty or under a full-service contract with Sakura. For information regarding ICE support functionality, please visit our website at www.sakura.com. There is also an optional external exhaust adapter that can be purchased in case you would like to externally vent the unit. The processing module consists of four sections, a retort that holds up to 300 cassettes, the fume control system that is constantly purging fumes from the retort and oven compartment, external fill and drain ports, and the paraffin oven. Our VIP 6AI has the functionality to keep the cover on the retort lid heated at all times in order to reduce the formation of condensation, and it is the first model that has an integrated electronic retort lock. The handle is made of a special anti-static material to eliminate static electricity. In order to unlock the retort after the unit has been started, the user will need to pause and wait for the unit to unlock before trying to open the handle. Since the lock function is now controlled by the software and is no longer manual, and in case of a power failure, we have built in an emergency unlock feature that can be found here on the side of the lid. In order to open the lid due to a power failure, please follow these steps. You will need to find a small flat head screwdriver and place it behind the metal tab in the cutout. Standing in front of the unit, you will need to pull the screwdriver towards your abdomen with quite a bit of force. It is tricky since the screwdriver will tend to slide off to the right, but keep trying and you will hear the lock disengage with an audible click.
The inside of the retort consists of four level sensors, fill and drain ports, and an air port for venting. All the reagents enter the retort through the fill port that is located here on the back wall. As the reagent enters the chamber, the fluid will flow down the back wall and completely cover your tissues. The drain port and drain port filter are found at the bottom of the retort. All reagents drain back to the containers through this drain port. On the back wall is the air port that is pulling air from the retort to create vacuum and pressure during pump in and pump out of fluids. The four level sensors located on the front wall are as follows. Low is 2.7 liters, mid is 3.5 liters, high is 4.2 liters, and overflow sensor, which is 4.5 liters. The fume control system located here on the side of the processor contains two activated carbon filters that adsorb fumes from the retort and oven compartments. We recommend that the filters be replaced monthly. Next to the carbon filters, you will find the external drain and fill ports. This processor has three ports that allow you to fill your bulk tanks and also fill and drain all reagents from the reagent compartment using hoses that were included with your purchase. The port for station 19 fills the left bulk tank and station 20 port fills the right bulk tank. These two connections only fill. Station 18 port, the middle port, is the workhorse of this processor and it fills and drains all the reagent containers as well as drains the two bulk tanks. There are a total of five heaters that maintain the temperature needed to keep the paraffins molten. The top of the oven has a metal guide with clear Teflon tubing extending out approximately a quarter of an inch in order to make a good seal with the paraffin containers. The back wall of the oven has an air port to expel the chemical fumes sent through the carbon filters. The fans are constantly degassing the oven. With the door closed, the fans run at a constant speed. When the doors are open, the fan speed will increase to minimize fume exposure to the user. There is a wax drain that holds waste paraffin, which can be used to rotate or drain paraffin from the oven containers. The tubing you see on the back wall of the oven goes directly from the retort to the waste drain. It is always heated, therefore it will never get clogged. Four paraffin containers are held in the oven, three small and one large. Each container has a lip that can be used to position one container on another to easily transfer paraffin. Also, each container contains a baffle with level markings. Just like our reagent containers, depending on the number of cassettes you will be running, you will need to fill the containers to a certain level. If you are running 150 cassettes or less, you should have the level of paraffin in each container up to the midline on the baffle. If you are normally running 150 to 300 cassettes or two baskets, please make sure that you have the level up to the top line to ensure that you never run low on paraffin during processing. The lower section of reagent module consists of 13 plastic containers and one metal wax drain. 10 containers are used for your processing reagents. Stations one to 10, there are two shelves in the reagent module. The top shelf holds stations one through five processing reagents plus the waste wax drain and cleaning xylene. The bottom shelf holds stations six through 10 processing reagents, the condensate bottle and cleaning alcohol station. There is also a drip tray below the bottom shelf. To access the drip tray, the bottom tray must be lifted. This drip tray has the capacity to hold up to 2.7 liters of reagent. It should be checked periodically and cleaned. In the back wall of the processor towards the bottom, you will see blue LED lights that the processor uses for you to visualize the reagent levels in the containers at the start and end of processing, as well as the start and end of the clean cycle. Higher up on the back wall of the processor, you will notice the female connectors that connect the container to the unit. By clicking the container into place, a valve opens up that allows the fluid to move between the container and the retort. On the back of the top shelf, you will notice a black square sensor and metal guide. The metal guide allows the waste wax drain container to be positioned correctly and the sensor informs the software that the container is in place. However, it does not know when the container is empty. It is up to the users to verify that this container is in fact empty. It has the anti-static liner along with a plastic bag in place. During processing, you can program the processor to rotate your paraffins, and if so, this container must be ready to accept the used paraffin, which will drain into it. If the liner and or the plastic bag are not in place, the processor will still transfer station 11 paraffin into the wax drain. 
If paraffin was rotated, you will notice upon the completion of your processing run, the red LED light indicating that you should empty the contents and reset the wax drain for the next rotation. Continuing with the top shelf, on the right where the cleaning xylene station is located, you will notice a raised metal plate, which is the heater for the cleaning xylene. The cleaning xylene can be kept heated at all times to better clean your retort of residual paraffin, and if heated, it could reduce the amount of time to warm up the retort prior to the clean cycle. The plastic bottles themselves are all the same. Our containers have several markings to help you fill with reagent. The sides of the containers are marked every 200 milliliters. The front of the containers have three level markings to make it easier to visualize when placed in, inside the processor. The bottom marking is 2.7 liters and is used for processing 150 cassettes or one basket. The next one up is 3.5 liters for 300 cassettes or two baskets of tissue. The top marking should only be used for your cleaning reagents, stations 16 and 17. It is best to have the fluid slightly above the markings to ensure that you will not receive low fluid notifications. If you normally process 300 cassettes or two baskets routinely, you can add one gallon, 3.8 liters of reagents in each reagent container if you like. Each container has a metal nozzle and a plastic cap that are made of stronger material than the container itself. It is very important that you do not over tighten since over tightening will cause the bottle threads to strip which will lead to the possibility of fluid leakage during pump out. If you were to remove the nozzle from the container, you will notice that around the nozzle tip you have some air holes or slots. It is important that these slots or holes be kept clean and that you perform a visual inspection when reagents are changed. If you do notice any buildup in these holes and slots, you can easily clean by straightening out a paper clip and using one end to remove any buildup that you find. Each nozzle has a small black O-ring that should also be inspected and wiped down periodically. If you notice that over time it is more difficult to insert or remove a particular reagent container, it might be that you need to clean the nozzle and O-ring. It is best to wipe the nozzle and O-ring first with gauze and either water for your formalin alcohol stations and xylene for your xylene stations. And you can apply a small amount of silicone grease or microtome oil to the O-ring. Work it in and then wipe off any excess silicone grease or microtome oil. You should notice that it is easier to click the containers into place. With the nozzle still off the bottle, you will see the Teflon tubing. To properly draw the reagent from the container, the end of the tube must be pointed down. Improper placement of the tubing will cause low fluid errors. The only bottle without tubing is the condensate bottle. The bottle is clearly marked and is only meant to collect fluid. It should be kept empty.